Betty and Gus, Brian. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, the question to raise is, have any five of those been given or written off? The question is, have any fines or, uh, or loans been forgiven or written off? The, uh, to my understanding, the $3,000 fine, a uh, single fine that was imposed in March of 2010, um, was forgiven based on the cost of uh, and the amount of money that was spent uh, to our part to, uh, to satisfy uh, the issues of the building at that time. And how much money was spent to satisfy the issue in question, you know? In excess of $100,000. Okay. That's it? So, so that you have hundred thousand dollars it's fine. Problem. Now we don't the site. Will it forgive my parking tickets? <laughs> Good deal. Sure. Please proceed. Sure. Uh, last couple of slides just to give an example um, which one of the significant problems with this structure was. Uh, if you look at the photos, you can see some significant damage. Interestingly enough, the uh, original construction, as I mentioned, all the interior of walls or bearing walls which, which supported the structure of the building. Also, as you can see from the photo on page five on the left, I'm on the right, I'm sorry, the ceiling joists is also uh, were poured in place uh, that supported the upper structures. And let me move to the next slide for you. But as you can see, there was significant damage uh, done to the interior walls. So there were in them uh, under previous uh, renovations. Some of them they were completely removed, uh, which will need to be addressed before the project can move forward uh, from a structural and integrity standpoint. So either they will need to uh, brace those walls or replace them. Uh, most of the interior walls that have been removed will be uh, reinstalled and cast in place in order to uh, restore the structural integrity of, of the building. Uh, in the last slide, just to give you an example, one of the issues that happened was under previous owners when they did attempt to uh, remodel the facility, such as adding in uh, new plumbing and upgrading mechanicals, uh, their approach of how was the best, they simply chopped out portions of the, uh, of the structure in order to run the new piping, and that has uh, caused us some significant uh, load bearing damage to the structure. The other point just to make uh, for board members is that because of the interior walls are all load bearing and the size of rooms that were created in the late 1800s is not uh, probably what most of us would think of today as adequate size uh, living spaces. The existing, uh, I guess, market for a lot of uh, apartments in urban scale areas is that kind of open floor space kind of look. Uh, because the existing interior walls need to stay, there will be a bit of a challenge to redevelop these because they won't be able to open up any of the existing walls to make larger rooms. So uh, some of the rooms are going to be uh, uh, smaller, uh, and that's, I think, why you're seeing the market really targeting kind of singles uh, and maybe one or two uh, family residents in those areas because of the room sizes will be significantly uh, reduced. Uh, that was it for the If anyone has any questions from the board, we have a great answer. Is there any well, we have? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a number of questions, and then afterwards, when everyone's had questions, I just want to keep my peace of mind on this project. Uh, it would appear that the vast majority of assistance for this project is in relation to the historic tax credit application that is being made by the development corporation. Is that correct? Yes, the uh, majority of financing assistance will be in the form of tax credit from the <coughs> state to the historic tax credit. Mm -hmm. oh. Can you just describe the process? Is it, I think it's my understanding that they cannot apply for that until the project is done. Well, what, my understanding is what happens is they meet with the uh, Office of Historic and Park Recreation and they view the building. First, they have to do a part one, they call it, actually grades the eligibility for the building. And then what happens, the park folks and historic people look at the building and they only allow certain uh, expenses to be eligible for the tax credit. Uh, once the project's completed, they'll come back in and 
validate that the improvements were done, not only done, but they were done in a fashion that complies with the historic uh, <coughs> requirements that they have. So uh, things like you can't just simply put standard windows in, you have to back the period type windows, and those type of things. So yes, the credits would then be uh, eligible after the project is completed. Uh, I, I don't know if you can answer this question, the representatives from all the Where are they in the process with uh, the SHPO? Sure. The state agency? Um, so, um, currently, we're uh, in the part two uh, phase of the project. We work with uh, SHPO, uh, National Park Service, for a year now. Um, and we're currently reviewing a few uh, last final items uh, with regard to uh, interior trim work doors um, and uh, on windows. Uh, expect uh, another probably 60 days. Uh, Approval. Um, and then, uh, as, as was mentioned, the completion of the project, uh, we would submit a part three, uh, which would be an application for the uh, state and federal historic uh, Why well, you still have the microphone? Uh, would this project be going forward without the store tax credits being granted? No, sir. Bullshit. Will you will you move forward with any portion of the project until such time as you feel you have the agreement from the state to provide the store tax credits? What's the net worth of your company? Uh, we would only uh, without, the, without the assistance, so we would only uh, receive the project as far as the assets and any concerns about the housing board at that time. We could not make the project feasible by uh, and proceed any further with our uh, investment in development the property. <coughs> so is it fair to say that if you not get the assurances you need from the state, you will not close the loan with MT? Remortgaging the premises, and therefore you will not move forward with any purchases regarding construction, which would then normally be exempt if we passed an inducement. That's correct. So is it? We're talking about another two months until we know, three months or longer until you know you're do the project. We're hoping for approximately two months. That, uh, as I said, I've been working with the uh, State Historic Preservation Office for over a year now. Uh, the process can sometimes take several years. Uh, we're hoping to be through that process in six. Uh, assuming that you get it on the timeline once you start construction. Uh, we project to start construction this summer, uh, July, uh, if it's getting the timeline. I have no further questions at this time. As I said, I'd like to come back and make a comment if everyone else does. Are there any other members of the board who have questions?
full county taxes uh, from the uh, start of the project. Yeah, I saw that. I would be happy if they would pay full city taxes as well. Due to the dire straight city and many private owners who are stuck in the page here in the tax bill. Uh, why does that qualify as a gift of public funds? I'm sorry, did you Why does this not qualify as a gift of public funds? Do that for a Why does it qualify? Why does it not qualify as a gift of public funds? Which does it not qualify? The city property taxes. Oh, the city program is in the 45A. So it qualifies for that county opted not to participate in the program. So the city's option is to go It's a state law that sets that up. So the problem is the state. Okay, um, also the historic tax credit, that's national and state. And I asked a question about uh, the set aside of apartments, the low income individual. This uh, renovation will be in the census tract 7201. Right. Which was one of the lowest, I think, the city of Buffalo would probably bring 38%. It looks like you're putting the building directly in that census tract without giving the people that census tract an opportunity to rent one of the apartments. Mm -hmm. My question is that with the federal tax credit, would it qualify, would the federal federal tax credit qualify for at least two or four of those properties set aside? Low income individual, and if it does not, would Mr. the 5182 group be willing to set aside these four apartments for low income individuals? Sure. Um, let me address the first part, and then I guess we can ask the developer the second part. But um, typically, what happens is there are different tax credit programs, there are programs uh, that are specifically geared towards providing low income. Department opportunities and the federal government provides both tax credits and in some case uh, will, uh, income uh, offset with the public. So we build a low income housing unit, the feds will pay for, or sometimes the state will pay for a portion of that uh, monthly rental. Uh, for the historic tax credit program, the program is geared to encourage the developer to maintain the storage portions of the structure and offset. Um, costs that are associated with that historic renovation. Um, and to my knowledge, there's no requirement in the, in the federal or state historic tax credit uh, legislation uh, that indicates that any of the uh, potential spaces or whatever would need to be preserved. Uh, so I think that would be, as the first as far as the second question. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to respond to that. Um, as uh, Mr. Kaplan said, there is no requirement by the historic tax credit program to provide uh, those units what we would consider it. Ms. McDuffie, you have a question. Given the reliance on the tax credit in terms of the financing of the project, what impact would our actions today take um, on um, the project moving forward? Any? As far as the reliance on the tax credit, if it didn't happen? So, yes. Well, I think the and governor is we acted before that. Is there a timing issue here? Is one dependent upon the other? And if the state does not approve the tax credit, and we provide the uh, credits that we're offering? Sure. Um, I think the way the state tax credit and the federal state credit program works, as they mentioned, they, they do their first application, which talks about the only eligibility, then they file their part two, which gets into the specific elements of the building that are historic and how they would actually construct those or how they would replace them. Uh, and then once they get their part two done, typically what will happen was the developer will go with a project because then they have to wait for the price to clean it before they would get their tax credits. And generally what happens is a, a bank or somebody will bridge uh, that financing until the construction is completed. <coughs> so our benefit today in the sales and mortgage tax, uh, the developer has uh, publicly indicated that they would not be able to close on the mortgage uh, or start construction until they got that part two completed, which really kind of says, yes, you're eligible. Here's what your tax rate would be. And 
obviously they come in and do a uh, an audit after the price completed before they would actually issue the tax credits. Um, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of points to note. I think uh, since the PCIDA adapted the use policy has been in place, I think roughly uh, 30 of these projects have been done in the city. 32 Most of the structures that have been renovated have been vacant structures, uh, have been structures that are uh, uh, blighted. Uh, they are legacy buildings that have been expensive to uh, renovate. Some of them uh, have been vacant for decades uh, in different areas of the city of Buffalo, not just downtown, uh, but in residential areas of the city as well. Uh, through those 30 uh, properties that have been done, millions of dollars have been privately invested in the city by the developers of these projects, and hundreds of new units of housing uh, have been brought online in the city, which has strengthened the city's tax base. There are also a number of uh, programs that the city participates in that do create quality, affordable housing opportunities for low-income members of the community. I would like to cite one such example uh, St. Martin Village on Buffalo's east side um, that received about $16 million of, of benefits uh, and renovated a structure that had been vacant and blighted uh, and vandalized for about 30 years uh, in that portion of the community uh, that has 85 units. Uh, I think about 90% of those units are rented now by persons who are low income. So the city has tried to work on a mix of programs to improve uh, housing options and housing availability uh, for uh, various income levels of, of individuals, all designed to strengthen um, the city of Buffalo, strengthen its tax base, uh, and to create more economic and employment opportunities for people that live in the city. Uh, as part of the Queen City Hub Plan and the Buffalo Building Reuse Project, one of the goals is to make downtown Buffalo a 24-7 live, work, play environment where people are living downtown, where people are working downtown, and there are different service and recreational opportunities in downtown Buffalo. Downtown is now become one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the city uh, since 2005, close to a thousand units of new housing created in downtown. This property uh, has been the subject of complaints by people that live in this immediate area uh, for a very long period of time. Uh, as you heard, it has been uh, vacant for two decades. Uh, I think it makes imminent sense uh, to support this project and move this development forward. Thank you very much, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. May, may I ask you a few questions? Um, I was in Congress for 28 years and dealt with a good many different housing and community development programs. It was um, the, the subject matter of, of the committee that I served on. Um, as I understand it, the city gets considerable community development block grant monies, and that a great portion of those monies must be spent in for low and moderate income people in areas. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Currently, we have uh, projects that are ongoing on the east side of Buffalo, on the south side of Buffalo, on the west side of Buffalo, and in downtown Buffalo uh, that would benefit uh, low to moderate income individuals. And it's extremely difficult to use community development monies for market rate housing designers. Uh, it is impossible to use community development monies for market rate development. Uh, the, the funds being used for this project, though, are not 
uh, federal community development funds. It's a different tool. <laughs> There's another tool, the home program. Uh, the home program has been used within the city of Buffalo. Is that exclusively for low and moderate incomes? I guess it is. Can you give us some examples of how those monies have been used within the city? Uh, those monies have been used for apartment projects. Those monies have been used for uh, uh, residential uh, projects where uh, single family and double uh, structures have been renovated. Uh, those funds have been used for low-income senior citizens to help uh, renovate their homes. So those are a variety of uh, ways that those funds are utilized. Well, another federal program that I worked with was the Section 8 program, the Section 202 program. Uh, it's my understanding that those can only be used for low and moderate income uh, individuals. How is that being applied? Now? How has that been applied in the city of Buffalo? Uh, the Section 8 funds uh, have been used by the Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority in some cases uh, for low income individuals, uh, not moderate income individuals. Uh, also, uh, Belmont uh, Shelter uh, is the uh, organization, it's a not for profit, a 501. C3 housing management organization uh, that monitors uh, most of the Section 8 vouchers that are available in the city. So if we did want to have people living in the city of Buffalo other than low income, we'd have to have market rate housing. And this, to my knowledge, is the only tool that the county has to be of assistance in that. This, this is one of the few tools, and to have a strong and stable community, you need a mix of housing yeah. options. Uh, you Other need, than low income? Uh, housing for people who are very low income, low income. Uh, you need opportunities for people who are homeless. Uh, you need housing for people who are middle income. Uh, you need housing for people who are upper income to have a strong and vibrant community. During the public hearing, a good many comments were made that we ought not to be assisting uh, the owner of Bucket Development Corporation. Yeah.
maintaining their property according to code. But again, there has been a significant vacancy. This property has been owned uh, by others. Uh, it has been uh, reviewed for development by others. And I think it's a very good thing for the community that a viable project is being proposed that can be completed. Are there other questions regarding this project? Can I ask Mr. one Hoffer, very please. respectfully question? Yes, um, I have two questions. One is, do we have an estimate on the uh, approximate payroll taxes that will be generated by the 30 construction jobs that we'll be working on this project for two years? And also, if this project were to go uh, derelict in the default, from the responsibility of the city, what would it cost to demolish this structure? We'll go there right now. <laughs> as far as the payroll, <laughs> as far as the, payroll <laughs> the audience has been terrific thus far. I would ask them to continue to be terrific by only observing and listening. Demolition by neglect. As far as the payroll taxes go, the, uh, the 30 construction job, we do have any plan on the last minute to pay gives you an estimate of what the salary of those uh, waiters would be and the payroll taxes. I don't have a very good idea to get you a copy of that. Um, I'm trying to remember what you guys had in there for total, total uh, wages for the uh, construction uh, side was all or half of that. What's the net worth of your company? How many? We had 30, it was 30. The total value of the construction is about five million. And generally, look at half of that as actual wages, so probably two and a half million dollar wages, and then the uh, payroll taxes, depending on individual. So that's like your know, 25 percent, between 20 percent of that potentially would be so in the neighborhood of what Thank you, four hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. Paid by the uh, construction activity. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of this kind of issue, I don't know if you guys did. It would probably be a good idea in the future to include that as part of the evidentiary. Sure. Just now. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, demolition estimates. Uh, sure. Wow. Maybe we should table this for a little longer, guys. The, the, the city would not. <laughs> be in a position of being responsible for any demolition of this property if this project did not go forward. We would hold this owner of the property responsible for the disposition <laughs> of this property. The, you know, and as you've heard me discuss, unfortunately, uh, during my tenure, the city has had to demolish about 4,500 properties. Uh, in many cases, when that done, those are not all city resources. Uh, when there is a responsible owner, when there is an owner with resources, we legally go after that owner to pay the demolition expense. Uh, so the residents of this community and the taxpayers are not bearing that burden. The burden that, that we face is when owners walk away who don't have resources, companies that go bankrupt, people that go bankrupt, people that find different ways to tax shelter uh, their holdings. Those are the ones that walk away and leave the resident and taxpayer holding the bag for these demolition costs. In this case, uh, like this company or, or not, you have a responsible development organization that has resources who is the owner of this property that will be held responsible for. So even if this project does not go forward for whatever reason, and I hope it does, but if it doesn't, it will not fall on the backs of the taxpayers uh, to demolish this structure. And what difficulties, Mr. Mayor, might be faced because it is on the National Historic Register. Is it as easy to demolish a building? It, it is not. When, when a building is listed on the National Register, uh, it is much more difficult uh, to demolish. I won't say impossible, but it is incredibly difficult. It's a higher standard 
uh, the tests uh, to get that done are much more difficult. And so I think that this significant structure is one that has a, uh, a level of protection that we don't have to worry about demolition. And because uh, this developer has a 30-year track record of developing uh, some very substantial properties uh, in this community, uh, they can very well be held accountable uh, to do this right and to do it properly. Uh, from the information that they have presented, uh, we feel that this is going to be done right if all of these uh, benefits that are required uh, to make the project work go forward. Do oh, any members of the board have question? any questions? I remind the audience that the only participants in the meeting are members of the board. The burden we're left with is when public officials like you choose not to fund the community. Now, if anybody does, and we're left speak holding out, the bag, I would ask members of the sheriff's department to kindly approach them and make a personalized invitation request for them to remain as observers. We're to be seen and not heard. As opposed to. Uh, also, let the record show that none of these board officials were here for the, the public meeting last week. Yes. Yes, Chairman. I have a reservation project. Reservation number one. For the $3,000 that was given or written off, either loan, penalty, or whatever. But I've had many friends and constituents who bought some home to see Buffalo for less than $3,000. Oh, to the city of Buffalo in the last uh, foreclosure auction. Number two is not getting a firm commitment from 5182 group on setting size apartment for the board of division. I think that if that good faith effort made is if it's not significant to a private this big and lost revenue, but it create a lot of goodwill on people in that community to have a lottery made for apartments that will be registered for a lottery those who qualify. I think that these two addition or scenarios keep me from voting this project. If I leave, if I point this because I don't want a ticket, then the mayor will guarantee I won't get a ticket. I'm part of the then I'll save it. Otherwise, I have to leave at 10.30, so I won't get a ticket. But if, if, but if a commitment, if a commitment was made by a 582 group, they will be willing, not to consider it, because once we go consideration, down the drain. Mm -hmm. yep. So she set aside these four apartments, and, well, at least two, up to four, for low income division or seniors who are qualified, because it's good to say that I live in this neighborhood and also have an opportunity to reside in one of those apartments. Thank you. Cool.